Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Mage Guide. You want to play an in-base character, use spells, and dominate the whole game? We know Mage is easy mode. Together with summons, you're going to have a very fun time. I would definitely say Mage is for someone that wants to beat the game, but is not looking for the greatest challenge. Not saying that Mage makes everything like you don't have to put effort in. Still have to roll at certain moments and other shenanigans but all in all with the strategies that the mage build allows you to apply no matter how good or bad you are at souls likes games you should be able to get through the whole game kill i would say all the optional bosses and in total have a generous good joy i beat the whole game with an agility build and without summons and it was pain and now playing the mage makes it so much fun because it's brilliant. We're gonna go over what equipment you pick up in the beginning, how you put your skills, and what is absolute important S tier equipment for you to get. When it comes down to spells, it's obviously personal preference. Do you wanna have the carrying greatsword? Is it gonna be some, you know, Loretta great bow shenanigans? Or what are you looking for, right? That is personal preference, but I'll show you how and where to get these things early. But most importantly, what we're going to talk about is how to get the number one piece of equipment in the first five minutes of the game. That would be the meteorite stuff together with this amazing spell that will essentially allow you to just blast your early game easier than ever. It's gravity magic with stones that does actually physical damage, so extremely good against certain opponents. Uh, whereas magical damage also, well, like straight up arcane damage is very good against other opponents too. But the physical damage that these rocks offer you is absolutely fantastic. And you can get these items in the first five minutes of the game. I'll show that to you on a new character. Timestamps are in the description below. So jump wherever you would like to be, whatever part you're interested in. If you want to go for a mage, you have to choose between an astrologer and you could also go for the prisoner. The prisoner does have more dexterity in the beginning than the astrologer has to offer. And it also has a little bit more vigor because the vigor here is on nine and also the prisoner is level nine in total, whereas the astrologer is only level six. But the astrologer has 16 intelligence instead of 14 dexterity and 14 intelligence. And I think the start as an astrologer is in total better because here it comes. You want to reach 52 intelligence as fast as possible. I'll go over that alongside the video. That's why I choose the astrologer because he's faster able to reach that amount intelligence i always choose the golden seed as a keepsake because i just get my more flash charge straight away you could also go for a stone sword key it actually wouldn't hurt because you can use it very early in the beginning but 90 percent is just golden seed for me step number one as a newly tarnished activate three bonfires graces and straight up get your mount very important you need to get your mount as fast as possible and then you can head off to get the meteorite stuff and the meteorite rock slamming magic now again we're complete fresh character level six still we got our horse just like this is no bogus shenanigans okay this is exactly what it is this is no like cheese <laughs> or uh got big level first so what you're gonna do is you're gonna head into the lake In the very beginning you can, you can get the map actually show you where the lake is so we're starting here, obviously, in the ruins that you have from the very beginning. And you're heading straight up for the big lake where the dragon spawns. And next to the big drake where the... Next to the lake where the big dragon spawns, there's a ruin full of dogs and everything. So we're having here this ruin. Okay, this is where the dragon spawns. This is where the ruin is. This is where we are. Start, bop, 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 and then right down. And we're essentially just heading straight for that ruin. Because in that ruin, there's a chest. But the chest doesn't contain an item. The chest is one of these prep chests that teleports you somewhere else. It actually does teleport you in a region where you should def 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 definitely not be in. Definitely. Because it's an absolute late game region. That being said, who cares about it? So you're going to ride in. You see the underpass? Do, 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 do. Kill some pesky rats because annoying. Don't actually even have to kill the rats. I think, no. Make 
way past them. Yes, I know rats scary. Ignore them. You open this chest, and you straight up get teleported. It's like, oh, 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 oh. Now you have to get out of here without dying. It can be tricky because they're these casters. I would head the right way around because then you avoid straight up getting targeted by the one caster. And then there's the other one on top there. And the trick is to run and then just keep rolling. Just don't stop rolling. <laughs> just roll all the way down. Don't even take a remote risk that they would hit you. We really don't want to die there. Activate the grace for later because you get level five smithing stones here like crazy. So you can return at any time you want to get level five smithing stones, but you won't need any smithing stones early. Okay. And if you're, if you're looking to upgrade your weapon, your melee weapon, like if you're a melee player, you can also go there and you can get many smithing stones. Very simple. So we're going to go right down and follow the rim here of the red grass for a while crocodile and again we're roughly aiming for getting to the closed ruins that are in here they're called the sage ruins you can see them up ahead that'd be the street of the sage ruins and in the street of the sage ruins there is one tower That contains a bunch of rats. A uh, plant, actually. Right here. And this would be all the way here now. Okay, see my, my, my position was wrong. And now here, there's these plants in. Brunard. Murdering them all. Again, you can you can actually murder them. Like, you know, it, 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 you're your mate, you're good. <clears throat> and the good thing is, right here, right now, oh, meteorite stuff. And the good thing about the meteorite stuff is it's an S tier scaling stuff. You do need 18 intelligence. So I can't actually use this one super efficient right now because my intelligence is not high enough, but it's not a problem to now with the experience you gain to get the last, you know, two intelligence points. So you do have the meteorite stuff already. Then make sure to not die to this weirdo. Get back on your horse. You essentially have to ride away from the tower and you have to find the underpass in the ruins. So here's the underpass. Easy found. You just walk in. And boom, you also have the cool spell. Now with the glintstone pebble and that, you're more than ready to actually go crazy. Now you still have to get out of here and we're not done. So this is, this is like setup A. A setup A to actually become very good. Now, now there's this stupid nerd in the way and he's not letting us out. Ow. Shit. Escape life. I mean, you could also die and just get teleported back to the grace. There's no thing, but you have already a base set of runes now. So from all of this, with the golden rune that you pick up, you have a base set of runes. That is powerful enough to give you the levels you need to obviously make your intelligence 18 straight away. And you could actually get leveled. Getting out of this. Also very important after you get teleported with a trap, you need to rest once at a grace to teleport again. Actually something I didn't know myself because I already rested at the grace straight away. But yeah, you need to rest at the grace to be able to teleport again. Now we have the chance to level up. So we can take the runes we have, the base ass runes. Actually, we don't even have enough. So we can take the base ass runes here, level four. Use. Bonus. Set the side of grace. I need to go up to 18 quickly. With 18, you can already put on your wand. And you do notice how much better this is. This is 117 sorcery scaling. This has 138. You have physical, you know, 25 plus 4, 39 plus 14, and it scales instantly. S with intelligence. So this stuff is now good for the next 60 levels, roughly. The only better wand you can get is later when you're level 60 or so. But even that wand, you have to upgrade tremendously before you even take it. So it has to be somber smithing stone plus 5 or 6 to replace the meteorite stuff. That's as long as you're going to keep it. But now we only have a base set of spells. And obviously you might want to have more spells to come, right? 
Now, after getting your meteorite stuff, first thing you do is you go back to the Church of Elm because we would have to get our summon. We'll be needing the summon to this actually perform. So it's yeah, night in the Church of El, and when it's night, you can witch. actually have the Witch Renna the there. So that's also very good, food. because you need the Witch Renna ah, tell her you can summon so the Spectral Steed, and she gives you the Spirit Calling Bell Isabel and the Lone Wolf Ashes. So this is very important. Is you go to the Church of El at night to get the Spirit Ashes, and now you do have the Ashes that we need to actually, you know, dominate here. We need 55 FP for that, and that's also the good thing when you're starting with this right now. Uh, let me check my status. We have exactly 84 FP, so we can always summon this. And the reason why we want to have the wolves first is because where the sorcery lady is, there's a tiny boss that you would need to beat. So you have Rena there. She gives you your ashes. Again, at night, she appears. And then we're riding all the way down here to the Waypoint Ruins. Okay, where we're going. Waypoint Ruins. Um, before we do that, me gusta, me gusta, I forget. Don't forget to equip your gravity magic <laughs> because I can show you the power of the gravity magic. Also, how to actually use it because you kind of need to angle it correct because you do have these three um, <clears throat> stones and the three stones, you want them to actually hit. And that can be a little bit tricky because they're always flying out split. And if the monster is too close to you or if there's uh, a wall in the way, no, you really want to stand open ground, nothing left and right of you. And he should be preferable five to 10 meters away from you. Could be also 20, 30, like the range is quite good, but you want all three stones to hit because the cool thing about these stones is they do physical damage, the rock throw. And that means that if you land X amounts of rocks in a row, that you actually get a stagger. Also FYI, if you actually go here at night, uh, then a night Rider starts. Uh, you could also just kill him right now. It's a, it's a bit of a challenge straight up, because uh, you have to look out with a rock casting magic. So we'll first show you how to get like your magical equipment. And then I'll show you what this build can essentially do like basic level. I mean, we, we did two levels now. We're at level eight, essentially. Uh, going to the waypoint ruins. There is the way down. Now for your steed. Select your wolves always first when you enter. Go in. Straight up summon your wolves. Go out of the way so he doesn't hurt you. Rock number one. And you notice the damage. <sighs> That's what I'm saying. Mage still needs to move, you know? Like, you still need to get out of the damage and the casting time here. All of them missed. I was too close and the angle was shitty. All of them hit, and he's staggered now. I'm out of mana, but unfortunate. I have to shoot a shot at him, and he dies. Welcome to the power of gravity magic in the beginning. Isn't it beautiful? And now you can open this door, and there's a lady behind it. And this lady, sorcery, blah, 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 you want to learn. And she sells you different kinds of spells. Still want to learn, well, even though she's an outcast. And she can teach you Glintstone Pebble, Stars, Arc, Barrage, Skull Armament if you want, or Skolar Shield. But that is just the base set of spells she has for you. It's actually not the real set of spells that you could achieve from her. Because very close by is a scroll that you can snatch. Now back on your horse. <laughs> It's a lot of writing in the beginning to set this up, but you're pretty much good to go for amazing awesomeness. So you're good to go. You're riding here. And you're essentially just beelining it down from up there. And your goal is to hit the hill that you just, like you see here, the coastal line, the tree to your left, and you're just hitting this hill. And our goal is the ruins that we see here on top. So we just zoom past these gentlemen. Snack up an item because golden runes you can never have enough. Go up here. And then we're taking what's next to him. Or the house scroll. And down we go. Without breaking our legs. 
the runes are here. And we straight up can teleport back to the waypoint ruins, which is really practical. And now when you hand the lady the scroll, because you yeah, talk you to her. So now. Give a scroll or a house <sighs> scroll. And you can give her more scrolls sure too, to by the way. Lose. Study sorcery and da-da. You could also learn Glint Blade Phalanx. You could learn Glintstone Stars. And I think now you also have Carrion Slicer. Which is a cool one. I like Carrion Slicer. It's fun. You're going to be using Pebble and Rock Sling, though. But you'll get Memory Stones later. With Memory Stones, you have more. Uh, that Carrion Slicer. So, well, quite a nice spell. You can spam. And it does also do significant damage. Especially with your S-tier scaling stuff that you have straight in the beginning. If you take yourself like that little plant, you go, uh huh. Right? So you just one one clap these. <laughs> Innocent. Innocent. Now after doing all your gear route, you can essentially start having all the fun you would like to have. Let me show you how to, for example, kill one of the very first bosses, the beast man. And on top of that, how you can manhandle the storm giant. Plus, afterwards, just to after you learned how easy this is, uh, we'll be showing you the best hat possible for mages and also where the next magical stuff is. Because there's the best head that actually gives you intelligence. Yes, there's a head that gives you intelligence, gentlemen. And then the stop that you would need when you're level 60 plus. Also, how are you gonna spend your skills? For me, it's very simple. For my main character, I upped my FP and my vigor a bit, and then the rest goes straight up into intelligence, intelligence, intelligence. I'll show that on my main character, how he's looking with level 60 now. So we go here, there's the beast man. Essentially summon our spirits. Have your spirits straight away. Jump away from him. Have your spirits get the aggro. Pull up the rock sling. Mana potion. So this is magic. As I said, everyone is going to be able to do every kind of content with this. Not, it's not impossible. Very easy. You're able to do that. Every one of us is able to do that. And that's the beauty about it. In the situations where you have your summons, you have that. If you don't have your summons, I mean, obviously, you got to also take care that your summons get upgraded accordingly to what you're doing. So what I've been doing is I've been pumping my vigor up to 14. My mind is currently at 20. My endurance went up to 12, so you want a little bit more endurance to actually cast. And then the rest, straight up into intelligence. So you get 52 intelligence, and you're actually able to get what you're looking for. In the beginning, I usually do it this way, that I have intelligence always 10 points higher than Vigor. But Vigor only went up to 14 for me, because I didn't need more. Now, you know these giants, right? They give 1,000 runes in the beginning. 1,000 runes sounds quite significant, doesn't it? And we all know how tricky they can be to kill with a melee character. I and mean, if you know what you're doing, you're going to ride around them. Uh, you're going to slice them until they go down, execute them in the face, and so on shenanigans. But also, you get to consider what, you know. But also, you could get hit. I mean, right now, I'm just here on my, on my little horse team, right? I'm riding down the barn. Very important about the meteorite stuff on top, by the way, is that you can't upgrade the meteorite stuff. So that one will always stay what it is. Which is good because you actually don't have to worry about upgrading, finding resources or anything. You just play it that way. Now, there, there are gentleman giants, right? Uh, we're aiming for his chest. Hello, gentlemen giant. I know it's cyberbullying at this point. So how I allocate my flask is usually I get in the beginning two or three seeds very early on. And then I have a four in mana and only one essentially in uh, so what we're looking at is the Twin Sage Glintstone Crown. And as you can see, my intelligence is 52, 46, 52. 
Crazy, right? On top of that, I wear the Lucid Glintstone stuff, but I also did have, obviously, the Azure Glintstone stuff. And these are the two we're going to show you how to get. Most importantly, as you get past Margit the Fell, which should be relatively easy for you, no problem, you're a magician, you can actually go up to the Church of Vows. So you can either ride all the way the right side here, meow, to get to the Church of Vows up here with the Turtle Pope, or you can beat Raya in the library, and there's a teleporter close by that brings you to the Turtle Pope as well. At the Church of Vows, you have this Turtle Pope that you can feed with even more scrolls to give you more spells. And he sells a significant amount. He's a very nice dude. And also, if you, by the way, hit an NPC, made NPCs angry, you can actually get absolution here at the statue. So he has sorcery, and he can give you Glintstone Comet Charn, Star Shower, the Magic Glint Blade, and most importantly, the Carrion Greatsword. Because you saw the slicer, right? But the Carrion Greatsword... That one is really fun, and I highly recommend you getting it. So after killing Margaret the Fell, I would almost just straight up ride there to the Pope to actually get that one. It, 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 the Karen Great, it's just fantastic. I mean, before even thinking about doing the library. Because in the library, you might need the Karen Great Sword because there's a lot of opponents that are always stacked. There are multiple two, three, four at the same time. And with the Great Sword, you can just zip, 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 zip. And you can also just ride around the map and just slice people with the Karen Great Sword. Now, how do you get the head? For the head, you have B to beat the firewolf in the debate parlor. Hashtag spoiler alert. Sorry. After beating the firewolf, you had straight out after that door. So this is where you entered. You had straight out this door. And it's gonna be a little bit of a tricky way to actually get there. So we have this open, you had it to the left. Now you'll be having to display some amazing parkour skills and also not get hit by people. So they're shooting spells at you, but you're running, so you're not getting hit, obviously, because you're so agile. You jump down here. If one in your back is shooting also at you, ignore him or that guy too. And then just jump over. Ta-da! We heal one time. And by the way, after this, I'll be showing you how to increase your stats properly or how my stats are looking at this level now now after getting past these two gentlemen or not even fighting them but since it's a boat gentleman you kind of want to uh you crawl all the way up here and now you have these annoying pesky bird dudes that you have to kill and there's another magician i will just run past them now so we're not going for any kind of fighting here we just make our way downtown so we can show you the way you jump down and yes it feels weird but you're going down further further yes further <laughs> And I think you actually can shortcut this by just jumping over here. Yes. Don't actually have to do that. Do not descend that ladder. Again, jump over. Have this gentleman here that you're going to murder. And now you're almost there. Okay, we went, we went all the way to get to this spot. You're gonna jump through a window and you need to hit one of the beams. Now, there would be another glintstone key on the first one. So the one that's facing here on this body, there's another glintstone key. There's a sorcerer, you can kill him straight away. When you're going down, look for the patrol. There's a patrol down here and you don't wanna jump into their arms. You're gonna face in the direction that you jumped into. So we're not facing in the direction like you know, like in the direction here to the big yard. We're essentially turning and we're facing into the... So when you're when you're opening your map, you're facing with your character in the direction of the open space. You're not facing into the other direction, okay? Not, not in this, you're facing in this direction. Then you jump down and you go onto this balcony. And on this balcony, in this corner, is a magical crab that you kill and it straight up drops this hand you can equip. Then after you're done with that, you want to get into this little pathway. 
Now we do have him here, so we just murder him quickly. I, Jebediah, Jimothy, Springfield. There's this guy, and we're gonna murder him too. Always make sure you have enough enough magic with you. And most importantly, on the other side, there's also a ladder to kick down. So this ladder you can kick down, and then you can actually teleport into the Church of Kaku and walk up that ladder to get here, just in case you die to unfortunate circumstances. Now, the trick is you have to get past this gentleman, and he's one of these guys that actually shoots um, multiple fire arrows. He's very annoying. we have tools against very annoying people, right? So, get him murdered. And here, you would straight up find the Glintstone Staff. So that here is the situation where you then also get the Lucid slash Azure Glintstone Staff. And if you get that one upgraded to plus four, it's also an S tier magic. And you can upgrade it further. But you see this is plus four with somber stones. It's still worse than the Meteorite Staff. The Meteorite Staff is still slightly better. So we have to upgrade this one at least to 6. So it's better than the Meteorite Staff. And I'm already being level 50 plus. And that's your basic mage equipment where you're going to be dominating with. Now if you're looking at my stats, my stats are very powerful. So we have 52 int straight away. Obviously. Followed by 23 in Vigor, 21 in Mind, 13 in Endurance. So 12, 13 in Endurance you want, maybe 14. My Intelligence, I'm going to leave that like this for a while now. And the next steps is pushing Vigor and Mind point to point to 30, actually. So I'm going to be hiring my Mind a little bit, and I'm going to be hiring my Vigor a little bit. I really focus on that so I can just cast more. I have more FP to just even shoot out more spells. So that one is going to get higher. But also do not forget your endurance. So I would say for every two points you put into Vigor and Mind, so after four levels, put one point in endurance. Because you do need endurance that you can actually just keep casting as well and rolling if you need to. Because obviously casting takes, you know, endurance from you too, not only ma mana, and that sometimes you end up that you don't actually have enough endurance. And that's what I'm doing, pretty much. Also very important is that you get your flask upgraded with plus four, five, and so on, because you want it always to fill your mana straight away. Because if your flask doesn't have the pluses, it's not going to fill it up later on. And that's how I've been balling through everything together with my summon, the Lone Wolf Ashes. My next step currently is I killed the, the magic, you know, I'm thinking about going for the city, but I could also try to kill Radon. I'm actually powerful enough with this right now to kill Radon probably. And with Radon, I could get my Mimic Tear Ashes. And then I would not only have my Wolves, I could also summon Mimic Tear Ashes to then have next to me, myself as a character, aiding me and helping me magic down people. Obviously the Wolves are very important and the Wolves are very good because they are three obstacles that also stagger opponents and you should upgrade them in the very beginning. The cool thing is the Wolves you upgrade with a normal Gloth worth and then the Mimic Tear Ashes you upgrade with the other Gloth worth. So you have two different ones, the Ghost Glove Worth and the gra Grave Glove Worth. <laughs> so the, the Grave Glove Worth and you have the Ghost one. And the Ghost is then for your Mimic and the Grave is essentially for your Wolves. And that is the Mage build, that is the Mage Guide. And with that, you're just going to be flying through content. When I first tried Margit, I first tried, you know, uh, the Grafted, Godrin, and all the others. And you're just flying through and having fun. Yes, it is less of a challenge. No, it's not less fun actually brilliant to just shit face these enemies especially if you know how hard it is to do with melee if you like this guide don't forget to subscribe to follow for more also how to get the mimic tier ashes there's a whole guide for that on it too and a basic combat guide for melee characters if you wish to see any content any videos on other characters please drop it here in the description below we'll be talking about the samurai too how to actually make a full dexterity build character and then we'll also be guiding you alongside with even more content boss fights and other shenanigans wish you a fantastic day take care see you in the next video